this lesson is on exploring hundredths. Last lesson we learned what tenths were, and hundredths are very similar in concept, um, but they are smaller. Hundredths are smaller than tenths. So let's look at some of the uh, main lesson points. <clears throat> so it says, um, as a fraction, hundredths are represented with a denominator of 100. So, and that's in the second point right there. So this would be hundredths because it's showing a denominator of 100. So one hundredths is written as one one hundredth. So one over 100 is how you would write it. And then as a fraction, watch carefully, we've got a zero and then a decimal, and then another zero, and then a one. Now, the reason why there is a zero right here is because in the denominator, there are two zeros, and in the numerator, there is only one digit. So, as I was saying last time, the only reason why those numbers went right up to the zero is because the number of digits in the numerator was the same as the number of zeros in the denominator. Now, when there is a single digit above 100, you have to put a zero in between the decimal and the numerator. Okay, so in, for example, 1 100, you have to write it like this. You cannot write zero, you cannot take that zero out because that suddenly means 10 one hundredths, okay? Because you're saying that there is a tenth there and there is not. That's the same as saying that, but it's not. That is a very different number. So when there is a 100 on the bottom and a single digit on top, it's going to be a zero in between. If there is a double digit on top and 100 on the bottom, no zero. So if this was, for example, uh, 15 over 100, 15 hundredths, we would write that like this. A zero, a decimal, and then the one goes right after because it's two digits. Okay. Um, and the, second, the last point is one hundredths is represented as one shaded square on a grid with 100 squares. So when you're drawing these, you're going to have to draw a few in the lesson. You're going to go 10 across and 10 down and just make it into a square. Because 10 times 10 is 100. And so that, that's how I know there's 100 squares. So 1 100 looks like this. One little measly square colored out of 100 of them. Okay, so that's the basics of the lesson. Now let's just dive a little deeper. Um, let's look at the connect. So it says... This grid is divided into 100 equal squares. Each square is 100th of the grid. So like I was saying above, so one square is 100. Seven hundredths of the grid are, sorry, that's not red. What am I thinking? I put gray in there. Um, we can write seven hundredths as a fraction or as a decimal. So just as... Just as I showed you above where it was 1 one hundredth, and that's uh, a zero, a decimal, a zero, and a one. That's also the same with the seven over 100, the seven hundredths, because we've got a hundred on the bottom and a single digit on top. So that means that we need to put a zero in between the decimal and the numerator, the number in the numerator. Okay, so seven hundredths is written as a decimal, as this zero, then a decimal, then a zero, and then a seven. We would say it the same as um, seven, or sorry, yes, yeah, seven hundredths. There it is. Uh, let's flip over to the other page. All right, so on the back, it's set. Um, we've got some examples. And so the first one says um, 90 one hundredths of this grid are shaded. And so that means that 91 squares are colored. And there are 100, 100 in total, hundredths. Okay, so 
Um, as a fraction, now you have to fill in this space here. As a fraction, it would look like this. A 91 on the top, 100 on the bottom. So that's the fraction. Um, and then as a decimal, now we have a two-digit number over 100. And when we have a two-digit number, that means we don't have to put a zero in between the decimal and the numerator. So we can write zero decimal and a nine and a one. And we would say this as 91 hundredths. Okay, so that's how you would do that one. We would say zero and nine hundredths. Sorry, that's not right. Zero and ninety-one hundredths, it should say. There, I fixed it. Your sheet just says that already because um, I haven't printed it yet. Uh, but this one, yeah, it should say ninety-one hundredths. Now, in example number two, it says write the following fractions in words and in the place value chart. So the first one is 9 over here and 100 over here. So I would write this as 9 and then the next word would be 100. So you write the word 100 and then you put a TH and an S at the end. Okay, and then um, in the place value chart then it's just like writing it as a decimal but we've got the place value chart to help us know what each thing is so we don't have any ones in this case and then in my fraction i've got a hundred on the bottom and a single digit on top so you guessed it we have to put a zero in the tenths place because there's nothing there and in the hundredths we will put our nine now, if you think that you can do the next one on your own, please pause the video and then play it again so that um, you can go through it with me. Okay, so um, this is what you should have gotten. You should have gotten, uh, sorry, that should be an S, 60 hundredths. Okay, and then in the place value chart, we again, we don't have any ones. And now we have a two-digit number above 100. So that means that we write this 6 right here. And then we don't necessarily have to write the 0 here um, if it's a decimal. But since it's a place value chart, we will put the 0 here. Okay, so that's that's how you how to use a place value chart and to how to write it in words. Next up, we're going to talk about money. We all like money, uh, so it says we can use decimals to write parts of one dollar. Um, it says one dollar is equal to a hundred cents. We know this that one dollar is one hundred cents. Um, but now that we know it, it's a hundred cents, and we're thinking fractions and hundredths. We can write it a cent as a fraction of a dollar. So one cent is one one hundredth of a dollar, or you could write it like this, zero and one one hundredth of a dollar. Okay, that's how you would write it in fractional form. Now we've got a picture of money here. Dimes, remember, are worth ten cents. And uh, pennies, even though we don't really have them anymore, they're still handy to use in math. Um, they're worth one cent. And so that is a total of 47 cents here. If we have four dimes and seven pennies, that's 47 cents. So as a fraction to write 47 cents, now pause here and do it ahead of me um, if you think you can. Um, but here it is. So to write it as a fraction, we would write 47 and then 100 on the bottom. Okay. And then um, in money format, so money format, um, I wasn't really sure how else to explain this. So if you didn't get that, that's okay. But what it meant is you can write in money format, there's two ways. You can write it with cents, and then you put this C with a line through. That means cents, and that goes at the end of the number. Or you could write it with a dollar, so in dollars. So you put an S with a line through it, 
And then this would be, we don't have a full dollar. We have a decimal and then we have 47 cents. We would say both of these though as 47 cents. This is, you would say is 47 cents and same with that one. Okay, so here are some of the, the things. I don't have um, a practice for you to do because it was a longer um, example, but um, it should be enough for you. So your assignment is on page 201 to 202, and it's numbers 1, 2, 4 to 6, and 8 to 10.